guys. We're going to do a little bit of lathe maintenance today over here on the Monarch lathe. I've been having an issue with the clutch for a little while now and I'm starting to uh, dig into it, do a little research and uh, try to figure out what it is that I can do to try to help correct the situation. It's been a little while since I've shown you uh, up close and personal the Monarch. I did show you inside the headstock a long time ago, several years back. So I thought you guys might you know, enjoy seeing this. So this is looking down inside of the headstock of a 16 inch Monarch lathe. This is a 16 CY. Uh, the CY having the lead screw reverse lever right here. That's just one of their uh, one of the features that they had on this model. All right, so the problem that I'm having is in the clutch here. So this is gonna be your clutch system. And what happens is whenever I engage the clutch to operate the lathe, whenever I go to release the clutch, which is this lever right here, all right, the spider pops out just like it's supposed to, but the clutch still stays engaged for a short period of time. And it seems like the lower RPMs, it wants to stick harder than the higher RPMs. Usually when I'm running up in uh, this range here, it releases within a couple of seconds, it usually releases. Now I can also, um, pull up on the clutch lever that's how this lathe is designed to break is if you grab this and pull up on it it actually it actually breaks the spindle and so in doing that if I pull up on it it usually pops the clutch loose and you know it lets go at that time so the uh, there's clutch linkage there's a rod that goes across to the back so you've got a, a series of different arms coming up to this unit right here and I'm gonna go ahead and this is going to be me pushing down on it right here, okay? So, it's pushing down. You see what's going on there? And you got this fork right here that's pulling this shaft back, all right? You know, here on the back end when I do that, you can see what's going on here. All right, when I when I engage the cl clutch fully, it'll it'll this will go all the way in and then it locks close. So, you've got a clutch pack inside there or a um, I uh, forget the technical term, but there's a plate in there. There's an anti-friction plate that's inside there, and I think that might be what's giving us the problem. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by the book. I've got my manual out. Also, back on this side, I wanted to point this out. So, you've got this cover right here that says grease clutch pulley once a year. That bolts in right there. Uh, first thing I started with was actually removing this, and there is a grease circ up in there. And I pumped it a little bit with, with some grease to see if maybe that was maybe an issue. The uh, grease was dry and it wasn't sliding like it should, but that has not corrected the issue. So I think what we're going to have to do is go ahead and uh, go into the clutch, take this out, and uh, see. It says you got to clean the clutch if it's sticking. Now I'll show you where it says that in the book. Uh, this is going in a little further of the all of the... Uh, the clutch mechanism, the rod that goes across, and you see you got this arm, you got this rod, it comes across here to this arm, and goes up to this arm, and into the headstock right there. Quite a, an elaborate setup, but these machines were uh, very well engineered and designed to run a lifetime. We'll go ahead and give it a run, actually. And I've got to put this board right here because you've got these gears here that really want to sling oil so I have to put this board down there just to keep the oil from slinging out but we'll run it in the lowest gear you see that these lathes run in an oil bath I've always been taught that that's one of the uh, features of this type of lathe here and while they while they work so good because of the the um, hel helical cut gears running in an oil bath, they're just very well engineered lathes. Whenever you've got a, a lathe that's got just uh, straight cut gears on it, you're gonna have more noise. Like that Birmingham lathe that I used to run at Motion, it had straight two gears and it, uh, it was a lot more noise than, than, than the Monarch. You can see if I Move the clutch lever here. So you can see what it's doing there. It's sliding in and out. That's the one I'm talking about, slings oil. So we got good oil, oil pressure. It's pumping oil good.
if you if you're wondering how you uh, how it actually changes gear so you use these levers here so if you watch see that one there so that's how you that's how you change the gears that's what happens it's sliding along the spline shafts and it's uh, engaging those drive clutches see? like that from one side to the other And that's how they operate all right so let me take you down here to my book all right so this is the lathe manual right here this is actually for uh, series 61 uh, some books that was given to me a while back by a viewer so this doesn't necessarily uh, pertain to my machine this is a much newer machine so this is the manual on mine and right here it says sticking clutch. Excessive lubrication causes grease to be thrown on the composition disc number 12, which is this guy right here, of the driving clutch, causing it to stick or drag. To eliminate this trouble, remove the disc and clean the faces. So we've got to take this off and see about cleaning that. I will say that it, I don't think it's going to be from excessive grease because I haven't greased that in a very long time. So. I just think that maybe it's uh, it's gotten gummed up in there because of the old grease and oil getting slung in there, possibly. So let's we'll see about taking this off and seeing if we can correct the issue. I know that the uh, spider, which is actually called the adjusting yoke, pretty simple to come off. You loosen this nut here there's also a pin in there that that's this pin right there is what you use to adjust the clutch but we should be able to take it off by taking this nut off sliding it off so let's just uh, see what happens we'll go ahead and kill the power to the machine and then start getting this apart right, we got the power killed to the machine we'll start with this guy right here I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to take a measurement on uh, what this nut is from the end of the shafts so I've got a good reference as to where we're going to go back because the clutch seems to be adjusted okay. All right, so it looks like we are 5 sixteenths from the face of the nut to the end of the shaft. I'm just going to go write that down. All right, got my tool tray over there, so you're going to have to pull this pin and unscrew it. This is how you actually adjust the uh, clutch on these. So typically what you would do is just loosen this and then take this pin and well the book says you should only have to move it one notch forward or reverse if you're trying to adjust it but that's how you adjust it anyway. So we're actually taking it off It's the first time that I've taken this off before. I've never had to go into this clutch before. It should just unscrew. Once you get it out far enough, it's out away from those holes. Okay. Alright, there's that. There's our spider. Just wondering, does this walk out? Looks like it, yeah. There 
here's the springs it looks like one of them are missing looks like there's another one missing oh we got three of them missing okay so this is what they're talking about maybe need to be cleaned key to the top so it don't fall down on me. I'll go ahead and take these two keys out to see if that'll help us uh, get this clutch plate off there. Is that you? Okay, I had Abby walking in here. Hey, this key here is pretty well, it's tight. It's not just coming out of there. So I'm gonna have to just leave that one for now to get it pretty well even here. I don't like doing that, but I'm, that thing is so tight in there. I'm going to have to dress the side of that key off. All right. I'll do some honing on that to get rid of those burrs. Looks like I'm not the only one to have to do that. Doesn't seem dirty on this side. I don't know, maybe it's the back side, but I think it's just this. It is not wanting to come off there. I can't get this plate out of there. I think that this, this center section is actually holding it, keeping it from coming off. I mean, we can get it to move. You can see that it slides easily. I thought maybe there was a burr out here, but there's no burr. I've cleaned this. It's just like it's shouldering back behind this shoulder here. So I'm, what I'm thinking is part of the problem though, is the springs. We've got, we've got three springs missing and this spring here doesn't even look like it's in good shape. It's been up, doesn't look like the one that should be in there. I'm thinking what I need is to replace all the springs. It looks like maybe two or three might all be, like this one right here seems to be the best one out of all of them. That might be the problem. So, I mean, I think this, this needs to be cleaned here, but I don't see a bunch of excessive grease slung up on it, causing it to stick or anything. I'm thinking it's going to be the springs. So I'm going to stop worrying about trying to get this thing off of here. And I'm going to pull these springs out. I'm going to see about getting some more springs. I will clean this good with some, uh, you know, heavy duty degreaser and put it back together with some new springs. And that maybe that's, that's all it needs may have figured out how to get this off. This uh, center hub had two set screws in it, including two set screws on top of set screws to lock them in there. That's exactly what it was right there. Okay. That key is on the bottom. So it wasn't dirty like I was thinking it might have been. All right, here's that key. I just need to rotate it around the other side. But that's how to get it off. Doesn't look bad. We'll just do a clean on it. I think our main problem is the, what is, is the springs. I think that's all that's going on with it there. All right. Here's that guy right there. So it hasn't been over greased where it goes in though is that there we'll get everything a good cleaning and I'll probably uh, pump more grease in there to purge this out and make sure we got some fresh grease in there I honestly think our main problem is the springs here all right good news we got all the clutch out so I did confirm that uh, greasing the pulley is actually greasing the inner bearing there I pumped some more grease and you can see a little bit coming out right here all right, so I'm gonna do that some more just to try to purge some of that older grease out of that bearing there. So 
I'll show you the uh, the parts here. Let me uh, get the grease off my finger. So here's our clutch parts, uh, minus the springs. I got them over there on the bench there. Just gonna clean everything up. We'll go to the parts washer, wash everything, dry it. We got to. Uh, we need to clean these keys up and deburr those so that they fit in there like they're supposed to again. And as far as the springs go, this is there's our springs i'm going to start doing some sourcing after i take this video to find out uh, where i can get some springs i know a couple guys that's recently been uh, ordering these for their machines so i'm going to find out some uh, good sources on where to get those i i was i would think that this is maybe either one of the original springs but i'm not sure so I'll uh, see about you know measuring diameter length and maybe get a variety of different size springs there so that we can uh, play with that. But I, I really think that this is our this was our main problem right there. All right, another little quick update. I contacted Keith Rucker about the springs and he informed me that he uses a company called Lee Spring. So I've got all the dimensions of what I think may be the original spring out of this clutch, and I've been writing all the dimensions down. So I'm going to go inside and see if I can order. I may end up ordering a, you know, a few different sizes just in case this one isn't right. All right, so we've got that. We're going to work on that. The other issue here is I'm wondering if this uh, brake material on the, the clutch disc here needs to be replaced. You can see that it is cracked right here. All right, but it's hard for me to tell whether this is good or bad. I don't know. I know that it's probably original. I'm betting that it's original, so maybe it should be replaced. What I'm going to do is reach out to a company here locally called uh, Clutch and Powertrain. They're over in Mobile, Alabama. We used to have, <coughs> excuse me, we used to have one here that was the same company. It was called Clutch Products, uh, but they closed up the Pensacola branch a long time ago. So I don't know of anybody in town today that could still do this type of work, but I think clutch and powertrain still will do stuff like this so i'm about to go send them an email with pictures and uh, see if this is something that they could handle and if they can i'll see about getting this over there to them to uh, replace the uh the brake material on the clutch but i'll let you guys know if we go that route all right all right guys it's a couple days later from the last video clip there i'm going to get you caught up to speed on what we're going to do so about the clutch plate here with the uh, brake padding material on there i sent uh two emails to clutch products and mobile with pictures so that they could look at it and and see if they could do that never heard back from them so yesterday i called them and uh, spoke to the man there he said he never got the email so i sent another email and i haven't heard back from him and come down to he said that he's just got to see it in order to uh, determine whether he can do it or not he feels like yes it, it's a job that they can do but he still has to look at it so the only way for, for whatever reason my emails are not going through to their company and that's really odd because i've never had anybody say that their emails aren't coming through so i, I would have to take this over there to uh, clutch products and let them look at it in person and at this point i want to get the machine back together because i want to do an oil flush on it too so now that I feel comfortable with taking the clutch off the machine, I feel confident that this really isn't the main issue, although I know this could be addressed. I really do think that it would be awesome to get this uh, repadded here. But what I'm feeling is I want to continue on, put the clutch back together. I want to do an oil flush of the headstock, okay? And then I'm going to come back at a later time, pull the clutch again when I know I don't need the machine for a little while and then take it over there to Clutch Products and, and let them go ahead and repad this right here. I, I feel more comfortable with letting a professional that does this kind of stuff do it, rather than me try to do it myself. So I am expecting the springs to be in today. I ordered the uh, springs from Lee Spring online and uh, had two day delivery. They should be here today, hopefully. That's kind of what I'm basing this, uh, put, putting this back together based on the springs coming in today. So hopefully those will be in and we'll be able to put our springs in, put all this back together. And what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and start draining the headstock. 
I've got this tarp over it just to keep dust and sediment from falling down into the headstock. But what I want to do is uh, go ahead and do an oil change on this headstock, all right? And I may film that as like a separate video, only so that we have a, we have a Monarch Clutch video and then a, a separate searchable video for how to drain the oil in the uh, Monarch headstock. That's the main purpose of maybe two, making two videos. It separates the two subjects and makes it more searchable for people that are looking for that kind of content on YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and start draining this since it's been sitting here for two days. Go ahead and get the oil drain and I'm gonna wash the inside of the gearbox out and I'm gonna flush it with some kerosene as well. We'll drain it, wash it down, run it with the uh, kerosene to kind of flush it, drain it out again and then refill it with some oil. It's another reason why I wanna get the clutch back on here.